Hey guys, Kev here, and I have a few knives from Rosecraft Blades to show you guys. So, uh, they were kind enough to uh, give me a few knives at Blade Show, and I wanted to show them to you. Uh, two of them are the same pattern, but different handle materials. And then I have a more modern knife, and uh, I have a little keychain knife. So a couple of cool things here. Let's start with the traditionals. These are the Lusa Hatchy Jack, I believe. Let me uh, grab the box here so I can tell you for sure. I have the Lusa Hatchy Jack in uh, yellow sandalwood and red sandalwood. Uh, very cool. This one is the uh, yellow red, I think. The the red or the yellow? I don't know which one's which now. <laughs> Shit. Um, you know, it's kind of odd. I guess this would be the yellow and then this would be the red. I thought this was more like a, a rosewood, but it's a red yellow, uh, red sandalwood. Sorry. Uh, maybe it'll tell me on here. That says RW. Oh, it does. Perfect. So this one, yes, this one is the yellow sandalwood, and this is the red. I'm glad it um, showed us there. I was just looking at kind of the tint of the wood, but it's really hard to tell. They look very similar. The walk and talk on these is phenomenal. The ergonomics are excellent. You have a very sort of standard Barlow pattern, I think. Um, really nice clip point blade. I love the swedges that they have on their uh, slip joints. I um, believe this is an Andy Armstrong uh, design. And these are available at Traditional Pocket Knives right now. You can use the code LEFTY10 and that'll get you 10% off of the Rosecraft blades at Traditional Pocket Knives. These are $58.99 I believe on their site now. So you can take 10% off. It's like another six bucks. Uh, not too bad. But I mean, I have two examples here of the same pattern, just different handle materials. And they are, you know, within, I don't know, within like 5% of each other in terms of pool and walk and talk. Um, I mean... They're damn near identical. This one I think is maybe a absolute touch lighter on the pool than that one, but it's not light by any means. Very fun and uh, fidgety slip joints. Something that people don't necessarily um, think about with slip joints is that they're fidgety, but they are. They're super fun. Um, you know, Jack Wolf Knives is what got me into slip joints and um you know i carry one of these all the time this is the uh second run of the laid back jack which may also be available at traditional pocket knives but just that really awesome walk and talk having that crisp pop on the uh, spring is fidget it's just a two-hand fidget and you know sometimes you can you know, one hand fidget them as well when you're closing them. But that's kind of what taught me that. And then, you know, you handle any slip joint and you can experience that. So maybe you're the type of person that likes to slowly close your slip joints and you're not fidgeting with them. These are just tools to you. That's fine too. Um, I just want to put it out there for the fidget folks who are, you know, all about the, um, you know, button lock style knives and everything. There is a fidget factor to a slip joint, you know. Anyway, uh, red sandalwood looks gorgeous. I like this one a little bit better than this yellow. Um, it just has a little bit nicer of a sheen to it, in my opinion. Kind of looks like rosewood. Maybe not. Maybe that does. I don't know. Either way, I like this one a little bit better in color, but, um, you know, either one would be great. And I'm sure you guys probably have your own preferences. D2 Steel, you know, 55 bucks with the code. Really hard to beat. That's the Lusa Hatchy Jack. Excellent. The next one, uh, this one, unfortunately, is sold out at uh, Traditional Pocket Knives right now. 
Now, you can also go directly to the Rosecraft Blades uh, website. I just don't have a link or a code or discount or anything, but there are some other channels that do. You know, check out Casey over at Knives Fast. Check out uh, uh, JB over at Big Red EDC. Um, you know, you can definitely get a discount on their website. I just don't personally have one. And they may have this one in stock. I don't know. I just know that it is sold out right now at Traditional Pocket Knives. Maybe there's more coming. I'm not sure. It just says new and then unavailable. Um, this is the Savage Creek gun stock. I actually... Um, had the original version of this in and it went through my pass around group and everything and i think it came back and i may have given it away or maybe it's up in the giveaway bin i'm not exactly sure what happened to it um the savage creek gunstock in stag that is the one we are looking at here another really cool one uh you guys know probably by now i'm not the biggest fan of the really traditional stuff um, I can get into a little bit of wood here and there with a nice bolster, but, you know, stag, bone, all that kind of stuff just isn't for me. Um, I do think it's unique and interesting. Every one is going to be different, which I think is appealing to people. But you can see, like, how thick this scale is over on this side. It's a little thinner here, and then up here, this side's a little bit chunky, and it's kind of cool to look at, right? Um... And it's always going to be different depending on uh, which example you get, which is really cool. Um, but aesthetically and everything, it's just not for me. I'm not a big fan of the bone stuff. I also don't like it much in hand because it's so irregular and just, you know, um, inconsistent, I guess is a good word for it. Um, you don't know what you're going to get. So I don't know. If this was fat carbon, I'd be much happier you know that's just the way i am that's what i like but that doesn't mean i can't appreciate this it is very very uh cool and i do like the uh contrast of colors and everything how the pins are all in there it's it's pretty wild pretty cool to see and i love the blade shape on this um the gun stock pattern is very subdued especially with this bone you know you don't have too much of a difference here um compared to some other gun stocks but it is pretty comfortable in hand not a huge knife nice little clip point blade i mean if we compare that blade to the uh, lusahatchee you'll see it's quite a bit shorter in terms of uh, height but same size knife pretty much overall um, this one has a long pull on one side this one has a nail nick on one side um i like the swedge on this one a little bit better i like this uh, this clip point slightly better, I would say. I guess I overall, I like this pattern a little bit better. It's a little taller. It's got a little bit more of a rounded nature. For me, that's better ergonomically. Um, the walk and talk on this is very good. It's a little softer than the Lusa Hatchies here. The nail neck is a little bit more buried, but it's not hard to get or anything. Um, just not quite as easy to grip as the Lusahatchee. Um, actually, it's not buried much more. It just feels a little different with the nail neck. But very cool. That's the Savage Creek. The next one, uh, I couldn't find on Traditional Pocket Knives website. So it might be another one that's only available on Rosecraft Blades website. And I really like this thing. I saw it on the table at Blade Show. And I just said, hey, is that a slip joint down there? And the lady grabbed one and I handled it. I said, whoa, this is really cool. And she just asked me which color I wanted and then handed me one, which was very nice of her. Um, this is the Awanata, the Awanata in blue. There you go. Um, I don't know what the steel is. I think it might be a... Um, a uh, very, uh, what am I trying to say? Lower end steel. Because I think I saw somewhere, but now I can't find it. That it said something about like a 401 or something like that. I should look it up. Um, this just says Rosecraft. And then it has the model number. There's nothing else on here. There's a little logo. 
Um, so maybe I made that up. Let's take a look real quick and see if we can't find it. Uh, Rosecraft Awanata. Awanata? Awanata, maybe? Um, here it is on their website. Let's see if it's in stock. It's $64.99. It is in stock. Oh, it's in D2. Okay, cool. I don't know what the what I'm smoking. Um, but yeah, it's in D2, and it comes in these really cool colors. Look at that. Um, yeah, I dig it. It's G10, and it's a little keychain knife. But it's a good one because it's got a nice stout spring. Uh, you wouldn't think it was going to have a really you know, kind of stiffer spring, but it does, uh, not too stiff. It's, you know, um, if you've handled some Jack Wolves, you'll be fine with this. It's probably a seven to an eight, but it's not like overwhelming. If you have weak hands, then yes, you probably would not want this one, but, uh, I really like the, uh, pool on it. Very thin blade on this. Um, and it's a nice little utility blade. And that strong spring comes into play because it's hard. I mean, I don't even know. It would take a lot of strength. Yeah, there you go, to get it from there. So if you're doing some kind of utility cutting, you're pretty safe with your index finger up here. And the cool thing is it has this sort of lanyard ring. And you can just put this on your keys. And, I mean, it's very thin. It's very light. Like, think of a uh, Swiss Army knife. SD Classic. I mean, it's something in that range. It's very small. Like, here's a Leatherman Micra. Okay. It's not much bigger than a Micra, but it's definitely thinner. And it weighs like nothing. Um, very lightweight. Do I have a Swiss Army knife in here somewhere? I don't think so, but very, very small. Um, I'll grab the calipers, actually, just to show you, because I think it's important that you know how small this is um it is three inches with the um three inches with the uh key ring about 1.1 height and a whopping 0.4 in thickness right and uh, it can't weigh more than an ounce and a half or something like that so it would be perfect on a keychain if that's something um, you would like to do. I think it would hold up pretty well on there. Um, but I think this is a fantastic fifth pocket dropper. Just drop it in any pocket, disappears, throw it in a bag, whatever. And you just have a little utility knife to do whatever you need, opening Amazon boxes and stuff. This could literally cover me for 90% of the stuff I do, and I would be fine with this. And I'd actually be happy and glad to have it in my pocket. So I really like this idea. Um, I think they did a great job with it. I think they executed it well, and um, I really like it. That's the Awanada. I think that's how you uh, spell that. And I don't know why, but I feel like maybe concept OEM these, just looking at those screws, because um, they use this kind of weird pivot screw. They're like the only ones I ever see using that one. But I don't know. I might have just, you know, made that up. Uh, doesn't matter who made it. It's really, really nice. So that's that one. And then um, the last one is just an honorable mention. This is the uh, Clinch River Swayback button lock that they released uh, right before Blade Show. And I just think it's really cool. It's M390 and titanium bolsters and clip and it's got a button lock with no deployments so you just kind of whip it out and um it actually works extremely well it's got a full forward finger troil um the lock is as secure as i think it's gonna get for a button lock so they did a good job on that um the centering on this is off i did uh tighten it down a bit and um, it did move over quite a bit. So I could probably keep going on it and get it straightened out a little bit more. I bet if I took it apart and just messed with it and see there, I can almost just push it over to the centered position. So um, very cool uh, titanium um, shield there. My car to handle is very cool. Um, the reason this is just an honorable mention is, uh, as I understand it, I think they sold these out and they're working on a second run and they're making improvements to it. So 
you know, there's not, you're not going to be able to get one. And, and, um, so I don't want to harp on it too much, but I did want to mention that it's very cool. Um, I usually hate this type of button lock. I am on record as stating the Elementum button lock that first came out is probably the stupidest knife to ever be released. But somehow this one's cool. I don't know if it's because it's traditional. It kind of somehow makes sense to me that a traditional knife company, right, that makes slip joints where you two-hand open them and, and you don't have flipper tabs and stuff, that they would have a button lock. Um, it locks closed, by the way. But I don't know why, for some reason, my brain makes that jump and it makes sense. Um, you could just release it and then two-hand it. Um... So, I don't know. And it's kind of fun to, to flick open. It's got good action. Um, so, yeah. I think it's cool. So, stay tuned for a new run of these. I think they're going to be popular. It's just an interesting and unique knife. So, that's it, guys. Check out Rosecraft Blades at traditionalpocketknives.com. I'll put the link down below. You can use the code LEFTY10 there to get 10% off Rosecraft Blades. Uh, and then you can also just go to their website, rosecraftblaze.com, I'm assuming, and you can use your favorite YouTuber's uh, code. Um, I do not have one, but you guys should definitely get discounts wherever, however you can. Um, so let me know if you guys have any questions. Big thank you to Rosecraft Blades and Traditional Pocket Nines. I appreciate both of those companies very, very much. And... Um, let me know which one of these is your favorite out of the bunch. I got to tell you, I think it's the the little Awanada for me. Um, I've had more enjoyment with this knife than almost anything uh, I picked up at Blade Show, uh, except for maybe this Prince Custom that I really like. Um, but other than that, I mean, this one's just a pleasure to drop in the pocket and just use as a little utility blade. Um... So, yeah, this one's fantastic. Check it out if you can. I love you guys. I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will catch you later.